Hello, 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 Nathan Johnson here. Um, we're going to be giving a webinar today on life as a makeup artist during the holiday season and other slow times. Because I know for some people in certain parts of the world, it's the holiday, well, for other people, it's just slow. So we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of stuff um, because remember, around our globe, sometimes it's summer and sometimes it's winter at exactly the same time, depending on where we live. So this topic is gonna be a little bit broader so that it's not super specific to a couple of people. I am so glad you're all tuning in. Uh, we're going to give it a minute uh, for a handful of people to, to uh, join us, and then we're going to start to talk about a lot of stuff. What I want to tell you guys as we dive in, uh, today we're going to be very question heavy. So um, you, can, you can pepper your questions in throughout, um, and they will all be saved and sent to me closer to the end. Um, but the, the topic we're going to talk about today is really to start to uh, put ideas in your head, inspire you to think about your business a little bit differently, and uh, then we're gonna open it up to your questions so that um, we can uh, push you further to be thinking about ways to challenge yourself to have the best and most powerful business that will really serve you. So um, before we dive right in, um, I'll tell you, my name is Nathan Johnson. I am very proud to be the executive makeup artist of QC Makeup Academy. Um, we are a distance education uh, learning program set up to teach people something that they might otherwise not have access to in most areas. Uh, to really truly learn uh, makeup uh, well, it's very rare for people to have that in their community unless they're in a major city. And uh, QC has brought it to life uh, through distance. And I'm sure many of you know that because I'm sure many of you are our students. Um, some people will say, but you have to learn makeup in person. And I'll tell you, no, you learn makeup by learning the proper techniques and getting the proper feedback and learning how to change your eye and with the right with the right people behind you that can be done anywhere as as we have students all over the globe thriving and succeeding in the world of makeup that can absolutely um, prove that so uh, once again my name is Nathan Johnson uh, if you aren't sure who I am beyond QC I've been in the makeup industry kicking around for a long time I've worked with over 700 celebrities uh, they include people like Paul McCartney, Liza Minnelli, RuPaul, Alicia Keys, Kate McKinnon, Leah Michelle I was the artist on two seasons of TV's Project Runway I've been a global artist and international educator for brands including Sephora and Cover FX I have written for or been featured as an artist in pretty much every major magazine, designed more than 20 New York Fashion Week shows, and I am telling you this because anything I've achieved, you can achieve. There's no reason you can't. I have no connections in the industry. I am a kid from Massachusetts, and any and all of um, what's happened by me can be achieved by you. And part of that, leading into where we're going with this, life as a makeup artist during the holiday season. So we're going we're gonna to kick into this um, right now. You have one of the best things that I can recommend to all of you, and we're going to hit a lot of topics, and sometimes I'm going to weave through them and loop back and, and come back and forth to a few things. Um, one of the best things I can tell you is if you want to succeed in makeup, and please trust me on this, you have to view it like a business as any other business would view it, right? So what do I mean by that? You got to sit and look at your calendar year. And you might not be able to do that your first year because you aren't going to be used to the waves uh, that come in running a business. But, you know, if you have friends who um, run businesses or if you have friends who are makeup artists, you're going to be following them. Say to them, what are your slow times? What are your this? What are your that? Because it, not that it's the case for everybody, but when people tend to stop money, start spending money, people stop spending money, especially within one area, you know? So there are certain times when makeup artists are particularly slow. And that can be holidays. It can be cold seasons. Um, so why are um, holidays and cold seasons slower? Well, let's be honest. There, how many people really want a winter wedding? There are some, but if we look at the broad scope of things, in the scope of weddings, how many are really lined up for that winter wedding? It's way smaller. And I'm not, um, I'm not, you know, making you know fun of anybody who wants to have a winter wedding. I'm just saying, you know, straightforward to you guys. Way less people want it. Right, way less people come running in for a winter wetter than what wedding than come for one in the spring and the summer when it's easier for people to travel to them when they don't have to worry about weather woes, you know. So um, 
It's just much more common for those events to happen. But what might we encounter, right? We very well may find winter formals. We very may find winter parties. We will find those winter brides, but the reality is there's a lot less of it. Um, colder seasons, holidays, they tend to be times when people close up. They hole up with their friends and their family and it's tighter, it's more intimate. It's not, it's, it's um, less money spending um, on, things like weddings because they're not happening you know um as often so other things to um to, to consider um in our notorious slow times um and why they happen right what are the things that we can do in those times to make the most of our business well if you are looking at your business from the perspective of a calendar year and seeing that it goes like this and knowing your moments of high and your, your, your peaks and your valleys, right? If you're looking at it from that perspective, you've gotta suddenly realize, okay, these valley times, these valley times are incredible times that if well utilized can become opportunities for you to drastically improve your future slow times, making them less slow and making your high times even higher. So um, what do I mean by that? It's a time to do lots of stuff and we're gonna talk about it. Network, business build, from a lot of perspectives, we're gonna cover that. It's an amazing time for you to learn and these are all things that we're gonna cover, right? So building your business, learning, growing, those are all major things that have to happen in these slow periods and we're also gonna talk about the importance of one other thing, personal recharging. You know, I, I think it's been a long time. It's, it's something that we talked about before in the necessities of a makeup artist. It was. Um, it was in one of our webinars probably uh, a few years ago, or even within the last year, year and a half, we talked about the necessity for an artist to recharge, to refuel, and our, our dips, our valleys, are great times to do that. When this becomes a problem for us is when we don't view our business like a calendar year. When we don't do our business like a calendar year, we're riding high when we are succeeding but we're panicking when the business stops. If we know that it's all par for the course, that's just part of the journey and we have well planned out how to use that time, right? So that's some of the stuff that we're gonna talk about um, today. So let's talk about making the most of holidays, uh, of holidays and other slow seasons, right? So we already discussed the kind of clients that you can expect at holiday, the most common ones, winter weddings. Oh uh, yes, there's not many. The good news about winter weddings is you're not gonna be surprised with it. Somebody isn't gonna tap you on the shoulder and go, my wedding's tomorrow. You know, you're probably gonna have done the, the trial for this in the summer, likely. Uh, worst case, the fall, but likely the summer. So you're gonna know this person's coming. This is gonna be an amazing opportunity for you to start to see, oh, at least I'll have some money coming in. Or if you have no brides, you'll go, oh my God, I have no money coming in. How do I solve that? That's stuff we're gonna talk about now. And if you're so late in the game, you might not be able to majorly solve it, but now you'll be armed and ready to solve it for the future slow seasons, right? So you can also expect to have some people for winter formals. You can expect to be booked for some holiday parties, things of that nature. But even these things, even these simple things that I'm talking about, they are fewer and far between, which is why we're gonna talk about how to maximize um, the time between, why is it a great time to learn? Why is it a great time to build our to um, build our business? When you improve your skills and technique, you can command a higher price. When you improve your skill and technique and your offerings as an artist, there are more people that will hire you. There are more people who will take you seriously because they see you are better trained and they see the improvement in your work if they scroll back through time, right? That's an important thing. Um, this is also a great time to truly market yourself, to network if you haven't been networking. One of the things I've learned when, I, when, when people um, contact me and I hear it more times than not, people don't network. People don't network. People think in this day and age, putting up an Instagram or a Facebook um, is gonna get you your clients. Now, I've talked about this before and I'll go over it again. Insta Instagram and Facebook are great places to let yourself be known, right? But are they your advertisement? maybe they'll get you 3% of your clients, but what will they do that's incredible for you? How many of you are like me? You become interested in something and you're like, hmm, I think I'm gonna do that. Or I'm interested in maybe hiring this person. So then do you or do you not go and read every single review that anyone's ever placed about that person? Do you not go and look at every single thing? So where your um, Facebook, your Instagram, and your portfolio are gonna become invaluable is people are going to use them to spy on you. 
And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. They're going to be peaked. Their interest is going to be peaked enough for them to go, hmm, I want to look deeper. So they're going to spy on you. And that's why everything in your portfolio, your Instagram, your website has to speak of you and your brand because the wrong thing in there, people can see the wrong thing and they go, Ooh, what if she does that? What if he does that? So this is a, winters are also a great time to go through and look at your brand. Study your brand as a whole. Have you, have, how many of you, and this is, if this is something you guys have genuinely done, make a, you know, put a comment below. If it's something you hadn't thought of, put a comment below and go, Ooh, God, I'm going to do that. How many of you have sat down and said, how do people from an outside truly view me as a brand? Now, by thinking about that, it means you're looking at what all the pictures, public pictures of you look like that are in any way, shape or form connected to something people searching you could find, right? Um, when you look, when people go to your Instagrams and Facebooks, are they more about, um, posts of minions giving in, in, interesting quotes or are they things that would want that somebody would, would expect a professional site to have? And if you find, Ooh, it's, it's the other, then create a second site or, you know, decide the, the, the directions that you, um, to describe the directions that you want people to see you and then stop posting some things because you might go, yeah, I really don't need to put up that, you know, funny quote about the minions. Why don't I instead put up something inspirational that talks about the power of beauty? You know, um, so, and it's certainly not me criticizing any of that because God, I mean, you go, uh, my career started long before the days of social media. So building my business was very different than building yours. That being said, the things that I've done are still going to be powerful for you guys today, but there are different things that you have to do that weren't even a factor for me right? Weren't even a factor. Nobody was able to spy on me from every single perspective from a million different social, social media sites. Nobody was able to look at each and everything that I did and say, oh my God, that was the day and age where people saw what you wanted them to see, right? So in this day and age, people can find everything. So make sure that what people, and winters are a great time to do this. Go back and look. You might be like, oh my God, I've got to erase everything. No, you don't. Maybe you just need to start a new account and let it be your business account and make sure everything on that. And that's where you start putting all your hashtags. That's where you start directing everybody to. That's where you put that push. And then you privatize the other one so that the people who love you and care about you are the only ones that have access to that. And then you can put everything up, your political viewpoints, your, your stances on everything, every picture of every minion you've ever loved or whatever. I don't know why minions are in my head, but they are. I think I saw them on Facebook today and they just clicked in my head um, about today's webinar, right? So these are great opportunities to shape and build your business. And we're going to talk about that um, all as we, um, as we continue to, uh, to, to graduate down. So marketing yourself isn't just you know done in how um, it's not just done in our um, social media. It's not just done in our networking. It's also done in our outreach to our clients, which is why it's so important that our brand not just be hoping they'll find us. Our brand needs to be helping them to find us. And colder or slow seasons are also a great time for that. So how do we how do we do things like that? Well, it depends on where you're trying to go or where you're trying to grow. But um, a huge part of it again is the networking. But it's smart networking. It's selective networking. So like, let's say that you've already found that you're a major success in bridal in your, in your small town. Now, I don't know that you're all from small towns or cities, but, uh, I'm from a city, but let's just stick with small towns for, um, the sake of an example. Um, so you're all from small towns and you have aced bridal. You are getting the majority of the brides there and you're starting to have a, a decent income coming in. So what are winters a great time to do? Winters are a great time to stand back and go, which area do I want to co conquer next? What's a place where I want to put my attention? Where do I want to put my focus? And then start taking cumulative steps in that direction. How does one do this? Sit down and make a map. Remember I talked about looking at your business like it's a um, calendar? Make a map for your calendar, but also just make a map for your career. So stage one. Um, some pe a lot of people choose bridal or retail as phase one for several reasons. One, it's it's accessible to everybody. There's great money in both of them, right? People choose retail a lot because it's uh, fast money, right? But secondly, it's an amazing way to learn. Although that huge variety of people come and sit in your chair and there's nothing you can do but work on these diverse faces, new challenges with each client who sits down. It's a huge learning opportunity. It's almost like going to school for free. And we're going to talk about why that's a valuable thing to consider in the winter for just about everybody. 
right? Everybody who's interested in it and, and has the time, right? Um, when we talk about um, marketing ourselves, building our band, brand, creating those relationships, one of the things that I've always found, and I don't think a lot of people think of this, and when I was early in my career, it ended up being something that skyrocketed for me and got me so much money around the holidays. Friends who liked my work started going to their businesses and saying, oh my God, for our holiday party, we have to do this, we have to do that. This guy has to come in and just do makeup touch-ups and makeup tips and advice for the women. And these things now I've seen, and this was years and years, 20 years ago, right? It's still happening, it's happening everywhere. And you can be the person who plants that seed. You can be the person who reaches out to the business and says, listen, um, I have an idea for you. Let's, um, you know, granted, there's, there's so many things that you can reward men with. There's, um, or even if you target fe female heavy businesses, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I I've been to um, events at Martha Stewart's uh, magazine and that's a huge thing they have. They have two makeup touch-up sessions. I have been to events at major, major magazines. I've been to events at smaller magazines. I've been to events at a popcorn company, and they have these um, these makeup pop-ups where people can get a touch-up, learn, feel good, feel great. So there's a million different um, there's a million di little different things, but I know I'm I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing, I'm bouncing to ideas, but they kind of they kind of come like uh, popcorn sometimes into my head. So. That being said, I started to lead into what my next topic was gonna be. One of the greatest things that we can do in winter is we can find our own business and we can find ways to make our own money, right? So how can we do this? Well, number one, partner with local businesses. This isn't just about networking. Network's extremely important, but like I just said, partner with local businesses to do events for and with them. Uh, partner to, you know, partner with the uh, hair salons to to um, have an event where you're going to teach women five holiday trends that they will be able to do themselves and incorporate into their next season's makeup. You know, that's a great way for you to team up with the hairstylist there. People pay the equivalent of what they'd be paying to go to a movie. Let's say uh, 10, 15 bucks, whatever, right? They're there for a couple of hours. The hairstylist gets up and talks all about, you know, things to do depending on the length of your hair that can transform everything. Does some demos on the people sitting right there, shows people what a couple variations in curl can do. Then you get up and you talk to people about the power of these, of lipstick shades and, or, you know, the, um, the power of the variations in eyeliner. There's so many things that you can show people that will, will are quick and extremely transformative. How to truly do a proper eyebrow. The true way to conceal and color correct to make your face look like a million bucks. It's less than a movie, right? And you're teaming up with a business who already has that clientele. Of course, you're gonna wanna bust your butt to get people in those seats as well, but if you're teamed up with a great hair salon, why aren't they gonna be able to get at least, let's say at least 10% of their clients in there. If they get 10% of their clients in there at 15 bucks, let's say that that's, you know, that's 30, 40 people, right? And you've got 20, 30 people in there, you know, do the math on it. You guys split the money, you know, or they get a little bit more because they're hosting in the space, right? Whatever you can do to get those people in, it's, it's, there's lots of smart little things that you can do when you partner with these businesses. Now, I had seen, um, and I believe it was Ebony, put up a post about teaching, teaching during slow seasons. That is genius, and that's one of the things that I have on the list here. When it is slow season, you can do just about anything that speaks to your heart, but teaching is an extremely important thing. Why is teaching so great? Teaching underlines what you do. It re when you teach, it better teaches you. I've become a far better makeup artist in the, I, I've been teaching alongside my professional career for over 15 years, and it has made me a far better makeup artist since I've gone through the teaching aspect. So if that's something that you can do, it's a really, really, really ingenious thing. Because number one, you're gifting something to people who will be able to use it forever, but you are deepening your own skill and ability. Because you can never truly teach something that you don't fully understand. And if you're teaching it and you're finding your students aren't able to do it right, it means one of two things. And it's normally one of them, right? It means you're not communicating it correctly or you don't quite yet know it well enough. Because you should be able to tell your students how to fix and correct everything, right? And when you know that you can do that, you know you know the skills. That's why it's gonna make you so much better 
a, such a better makeup artist. So if you can start forming relationships at high schools, um, if you can start, you know, maybe, you know, it depends on what's around you. Are there boys and girls club that have a small budget? Sometimes they do. You know, so what if you're making, you know, 50, 50 bucks each time to go in a room with 10 girls? It's 50 bucks you didn't have and it's doing great things for your heart, right? It's doing great things for your karma. So all those sort of things can be extreme payoffs. Um, women's shelters, they do have budgets, right? These are things people need. They have budgets to help people buy clothes. They have budgets for this. Teach someone, to, to, if they can teach seminars monthly that have people learning how to do their makeup so they're more likely to get jobs, more likely to be in positions to get out of the, the, the life that they're in, the life that they're trying to get out of, right? Um, get to a better, higher safety. Everything helps. And even if you're making a small amount of money to do that, all these small amounts of money add up, particularly if you're doing them during slower times. What are um, other amazing things to do um, during slow times? How about a, an email campaign? One of the greatest things that you can do right now is start to collect email addresses of anybody who's interested in makeup, the people that you know, and then start sending them maybe once a month makeup tips for the season. Something small and crafty, right? Start to let them be excited about your makeups. Then what's one of the things that you can do very smartly beyond that, right? You can start offering in-home makeup parties and lessons. Once you've built your list a little bit, say, want, um, how about a surprise for your friends? Um, for, for, as little as, um, for as little as $100, I, I will come in and teach you um, trends, tricks, and tips in makeup. Every woman brings her own makeup, and we, voila, you start to build your, and create your own business. It's an extremely smart thing to do, and there's no reason that you can't make it happen, but it takes time and planning. It takes building that list. It takes writing letters that make people think, oh my God, that'd be a great thing to do. I'd love to have four of my girlfriends over. It'd be $25 each, and we're gonna get a few hours of makeup lessons. That'd be awesome. You know, there's, there's so many things that you can do in that respect, and it's, it's good, it's a smart idea. And Donna, your comment there is a really good one, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Actually, um, that's, I'm, two, I'm two points away from that. Um, I'd already said that um, retail's a genius thing. You wanna learn and grow in the, in the holiday seasons. Every place is looking for seasonal staff. Every place, particularly places that sell beauty products. So it's an amazing way for you to learn and make a greater income. Get a seasonal job. That's awesome, right? You don't like it, leave it. But chances are you're going to love it because it's the sort of thing that you're going to step into. And I mean, how many of you out there have worked um, retail beauty? I've done it because when I was a global educator, I had to go into the, I had to go, I used to have to go in and meet hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women in a line. And the, the joy that comes over these people's faces, because most of them don't hire makeup artists. They're not people that hire makeup artists. So when you show them something that allows them to see how they can transform their self-esteem by not becoming someone else, but by seeing themselves in a different perspective, like the perspective of a clean face without dark circles, the perspective of a little bit more focus in the eyes, the perspective of showing off how beautiful their lip is. Right, so Lori, you've worked in retail. Donna, you've worked in retail. So you know exactly what I mean. These people who, let's say 90% of the people who come into the store, if they have a makeup artist, it's probably for their wedding. Most of them don't hire makeup artists. So when you have this opportunity and you work with people in this way, as much as you might think, oh God, I don't want to work retail. It is so incredibly fulfilling because the gift you give to these people and transforming their self-esteem that you may never meet again, the gratitude that they will give you and you're earning money to do it and you're learning and you're growing because of the extraordinary number of people who come and sit with you, who work with you. So I think that's a, a really smart thing. Now back, back to the comment I said I was two points away from. Guys, there's a really smart thing that you can all do. MLMs are a fantastic thing to do, and you know, it's not a bad thing to do in the winter. And even if it's something you only do as a seasonal business yourself in slow windows, MLMs are very smart. I have tips when you do an MLM. Research the MLM. Make sure it's one that is not oversaturated in your area, right? Number two, research the MLM to make sure that you truly believe in the product. There are some really phenomenal brands out there. There are phenomenal brands that are direct to client sale. They create beautiful product that becomes extremely exportable to women because of the bulk that it is sold within, right? 
so people can get super high quality products that rival some of the things they might buy in a dermatologist or plastic surgeon's office and they get the added bonus of you teaching them right there how to use it number one but number two you teaching them beauty tricks at the same time so okay let's say your average woman spends fifty dollars but you know 15 women at that event spell you know sell spend fifty dollars we, we, we know the math, we know what you've made right there, like 750 bucks, something like that, right? And yes, you probably only get, depending on where you are in the marketing, 30 to 50% of that, but that's still a lot of money for an hour and a half. It's a lot of money, plus the reorders and the, MLM is a genius thing for, I believe, and I don't, um, I have created training materials for MLMs, I have helped create products for MLMs, um, I, You'd think because I am gushing about them that I run one. The answer is I don't. I have zero connections to ML and any MLM and have not for a long time. But I have um, multi-level marketing, Rachel, MLMs, Avon, Mary Kay, Lime Life, um, Alcone, uh, yeah, Lime Life Bell Alcone. Um, God, help me guys, what are some more of them? If, if there's more that you guys um, do, or Beauty Society, um, there's so many. If there's more of them, guys, um, list them below because they're worth people researching. And if somebody lists it and you know they're with it and you're curious, ask them questions. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna not give you information about the um, about the the multi-level marketing they work with. Some people say they're scams. They're scams. They're not scams. There are great ways where there can be you can earn beautiful income, bringing beautiful product to people that you love. I will tell you, there are still some Avon products that I swear by. Swear by that I love, and they're not the only one. There are. I, I can go through most of the MLMs and say, "Oh my God, I love this product. I love this one. I love this one." And I have experience with just about everything, right? So there, there are great products, right? There are great products, and if you can learn and earn, because it's almost selfish, guys. Unique. Thank you. I can't believe I didn't think of unique. Um, if you guys um, can learn and earn, it's one of the smartest things you can do. And direct to client sales, I always say to people when they're, when they're diving into makeup, I always say, guys, guys, do direct to client sales and maximize it, do it smartly. I did a, um, a webinar um, and I don't know if Karina will be able to find it and put the link below. Um, yes, the clinicals. Um, I don't know if um, Karina will be able to find the link, but I did a webinar on the power of MLM done correctly. And when you do LM, MLM correctly, you don't like invite all your friends to one party. No, you call each friend one by one. Because then look at one party, you maximized all your friends, right? You did everything you can do and you hope someone will throw a party. No, what you do is you call each friend one by one and you say, throw a party for me. I want you to throw a party. I want you to have 10, to, 10 plus people there. Please make sure I don't know any of them. Wowza, do you see what just happened versus what most people do and then just invite all their friends to the first party? Forget that, you know, go one by one by one. Even if you have to drive two hours, pop in some music you like, wowza. Because I, I have never been to an MLM that didn't generate at least one other event, never. So if you spread everybody that you know out in that direction, if you're like, oh my God, I already did it wrong, doesn't matter. Let enough time pass and then just call and go, Aunt Margaret, will you do me a favor? Will you throw this party and invite 10 people I do not know? Will you do that for me? Everybody we know knows 10 people we do not know. Everybody. And even if you get there and, and someone buys, you know, in, in, and everybody buys one item, but somebody's jazzed up that they can get free stuff by hosting a party, it's a win. It's a win as long as you walk away with at least the gas and the investment that you made into it, which is minimal, right? So it's all a win. Why is it a win? Because you're learning because you're growing, because you're building business. And the way you learn and grow in, a, in, in, in an MLM, it's gonna, you're gonna see everything I'm talking about of building a calendar with your life and your career, you can see every bit of it in an MLM, right? Not only can you see it all in an MLM, it's an amazing way for you to also start to go, huh, okay, wow, all right, I built my MLM business like that, how do I apply that to my makeup business? Your MLM and your makeup business can happen at exactly the same time. They can and they should be. They are the same thing. 
And when you're working with your clients and you're using the product that you sell and people go, oh my God, I love that lipstick. You're gonna be able to go, oh, well, it's Divinity by such and such. Oh my God, well, it's, I don't blame you. It's my favorite too and it's only 22 bucks. Where do I get it? Let me send you a link. I will, you will, you'll have a link from me in your mailbox when we get out today. And I'll tell you two other must have that everybody needs. Bang, you know, chances are, okay, they don't buy the must haves, but they buy the lipstick. Again, it sounds like I'm trying to make you join my MLM. I don't have one, but I see the power of it, right? So let's move on from that. Um, building our businesses. Yes, uh, Mary Kay has changed your life. I get that, I get it. It can change MLMs. And here's the thing about them, guys. Are some better than others? I will say yes, only because, and, and I'm sure all of you know this, right? Not everything has set itself up. Not everything Not everything is created for the best of the client. And for the ones that really are created for the best of the client, they're top notch, right? And you got, with a little bit of research, you guys can all find out what those are. Read the ingredients, see the ingredient levels, find that stuff out. See, is it all about flash and trying to get people to buy flash or is it about substance? That stuff you can find out very easily, right? And that'll, that'll really help you, right? So um, building our business, how, how to improve during the holiday season. MLMs, like I said, are a really um, awesome opportunity to do that. What are other things? Um, and why, right? Why can we do all of this in off seasons? We have less clients. But that's why planning our calendar like this and knowing, okay, come, you know, come November is when I, I really buckle down because guess what? Who's not gonna wanna have a party in their home in November? Pe you know, people, or you know, for those of you, uh, you know, on the other part of the world, when, when, the, when the winters um, hit cold, right? Why aren't people gonna wanna have all their girlfriends over where it's warm and toasty and they're all laughing and playing and drinking wine and It's the perfect time. People are gonna be far more likely to do that in the colder off-season months than they are in the summer. Plan smart. It doesn't mean they won't keep or you're ordering your product all summer, but they will. Aren't people gonna rather be inside on a rainy or cold day than they are on the most beautiful summer day? Probably. So food for thought, right? So these other times, um, to ma making the most of our, our time, right? It's learning, learn. We're not just going to um, be learning by being in retail situations, by working in MLMs, by challenging ourselves, right? We're not gonna be learning all of these things just in that way, only in that way, right? No, this is a great time to say, all right, hmm, what skills can I add that are just gonna make me more, well, if I were shopping for a makeup artist, what things, well, there's two things I want you to consider. What would just look impressive to me? Yeah, would it impress me if I knew someone had studied airbrush? It would, it would, it's an advanced modality. It would impress me. But secondly, look over things and think, what would I just love to learn that will be better for me, right? What would I love to learn that will be better for my business, right? Um, and then anything that speaks to you, learn it. Because, okay, you're a beauty artist, and you're like, oh, there's no need for me to learn special effects. All right, maybe there's no need for you to learn it, but wouldn't it be exciting? Don't you think that would be fun? Don't you think it might supercharge your creativity and give you ideas in a different direction? Education is, this is something I've always believed in. When I was getting my undergrad degree, I was taking astronomy. And everybody would say, why are you taking astronomy? What's that gonna do for you? And I'd gonna go, I don't know. But it opens my mind and it excites me. And it's always made me realize how unlimited things are, including our own creativity. Who, who knew an astronomy class would do that for me, right? Um, other things, I studied um, also in undergrad, I had a major, right? These weren't my major, but these were things I put, I was taking course after course after course in. I studied the formation of languages, how pigeons and creoles start, you, you know what I mean, develop and you know, how it makes regionalities and dialects and all this stuff. Now what in the world is that gonna do for me, right? But it has absolutely informed my life as has all of the specific education that I've ever done because I've been like, hmm, you know what? I am gonna take that course from such and such artist on drag makeup. I am gonna take that da 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 da. You know what that drag course has done for me? It's shown, it, it's plain as day. I, this drag course I took it years ago. It's a very famous makeup artist I took it with. Um, it showed me how much of what's done on Instagram and YouTube today is really just variations on drag technique. Now, I've known that because I worked with a lot of famous drag queens, but when I think back to that, you can see its evolution and why people have, have graduated to it. You will learn so much 
so much by challenging yourself to take a new course and there's no better time to do it than the winter. And in a, in a few minutes, we're going to talk about um, the, the, cor the courses you can look at, why they're important, the things they can do for you, how they might inspire you. We're going to talk about that. And these are the courses we have at QC. Um, and yes, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, I am biased. Their catalog of courses is amazing. Let me tell you why it's created the way that it is. Um, years ago, um, when I came to QC, I was just a tutor. I came to QC just as a tutor. I had a little bit of time and I'm passionate about education. I came as a tutor. And then the amazing um, owners of the school, Alex and David, gave me the opportunity to offer feedback on the courses themselves because I had been teaching um, at some pretty famous institutions and training with, you know, training on a global level with famous brands, things like that. So they allowed me to sort of dismantle the educational process and reset it up. What I did with them, hand in hand with the team at QC, we, we put together a series of courses that mimic more than I learned when I was ready to enter the industry. It's, it's, there is more available for you there than, um, than the training that I paid a fortune for. Like literally, my, my training to enter the world of makeup prob probably came claim close to $100,000. Um, and there is more and better training here because it's extremely specific, it's extremely targeted, and I, I, fe I feel I can confidently say it's foolproof. But here's the rub, my loves, here's the rub. It's foolproof if and only if you put in the effort that you need to put in to achieve it. All right, it's foolproof if you dedicate yourself to it. Because in the Master Makeup Artistry course, the new MZ program, Every single technique is broken down one by one. You learn every single eyeliner one by one. Now, how can you fail if you choose not to practice them till they're perfect? If you are still doing wobbly eyeliners, despite seeing exactly how crisp and clean they should be. If you're starting to see the steps of the eye, but you're still bringing things way down here when you know an upward angle lifts the features, that's not learning, right? So we want to be extremely specific and make sure we are learning the invaluable techniques and then transfer forming them into a greater arsenal and toolkit of possibility within our own minds and imagination, right? Like I say time and time again, Master Makeup Artistry um, Program 1 teaches you the fundamentals. If any of you are on here and haven't taken that course, God, please trust me, take it, take it. You, what are the fundamentals? Fundamentals mean they work every time. Now does that mean I'm saying there's one way to do makeup? No. What I'm saying is, learn the fundamentals. The fundamentals are like, okay, how many keys are on a piano? There are 88, right? But those 88 keys on a piano, they create chords, don't they? Those chords are completely different depending on how they're combined. Do those chords not start turning into when combined with certain notes and melodies? Do they not suddenly become millions upon millions upon millions of unique and different songs? Why is makeup any different? It's not, guys. That's what's so awesome about it. If you really master those techniques, Master Makeup Artist Reunit A, they are underlined and enhanced in Pro Makeup Workshop, right? We add to them and, and add layer upon layer in global beauty. But all the while, what you're doing is you're continuing to perfect what you started to learn at a base level. That's the power of education, right? That is the power of it. So with that being said, when you learn those classic techniques, let's go back to the piano. We can, we can talk about a piano, we can also talk about Legos, right? Look at Legos, they come in a handful of basic shapes, but can't Legos be put together to make something as simple as a four-sided house? Or can't they also start making things like the Tower Bridge, the Statue of Liberty, the Sphinx? You can make anything when you really start to play with the most basic things. They can be shaped into anything. Makeup is no different. You learn these basic techniques and then you start to see, oh, but if I leave this off or if I darken this, if I change this, suddenly you see how the simplest basic things when truly mastered can be transformed into anything. That, my loves, is the secret that so many people overlook. And that's the way that we work our education at QC Makeup Academy. And that's why it's such a smart education, right? So then what do we add to it? Um, we add to it um, airbrush. Everybody loves airbrush. If you, if you guys haven't watched it, 
Go back and watch last night's last month's continuing ad with Mark Harvey. Go back and watch that. And I know Karina will put a link for me below. I want Karina to put up three links for me. My love, Karina, I know I'm running you through the ringer. Um, link number one, please put up a link to um, Mark Harvey's video. Please put up a link to these two. And if you guys haven't watched these, please trust me, watch them. Put up a link to, and because winters are slow, no better time to do it, put up a link for um, line, shape, angle, and, mo uh, and makeup, finding focus in makeup, and put up a link for um, conceal and color correct for me. I would be so grateful if you would do that. Guys, that is my homework assignment to you. It's free continuing ad. It happened, and some of you have already watched it. Watch it again. Watch those again. It's great knowledge. And this is the kind of stuff that you will learn so well in these courses. Now, airbrush. Airbrush is something that if you, it doesn't matter where you work. You can work in editorial. You can work in runway. Work with brides. Everybody wants the airbrush. Learn it. Master it. It will transform what you do. Interesting thing with, um, Airbrush, right? Interesting thing that you may not have considered. Airbrush doesn't have to be used entirely on its own. Airbrush can be used as the finishing effect. There are so many different things that, you know, that can be done with this knowledge, but it will also transform the way that you think about makeup, right? Why is the skincare course so important? I know some of you are taking skincare. I push people to take skincare. Why is that? Because I knew my makeup career was lacking because I didn't quite understand skin well enough. I had no control over longevity, no control over final finish. And guess what? Makeup clients are paying you for longevity and final finish. Now, let's say you're, you're in the market for a client. Are you gonna be happy when your makeup suddenly looks like it's sweating off an hour later? That's what happens if the person has oily skin and you don't know how to work with oily skin from an ingredient perspective. Would you be happy if you, if you had dry skin and you worked with a makeup artist and two hours later you looked older than dirt. I love that phrase, isn't it just so funny? Um, no, you would be really miserable. You would be so unhappy, right? So we have to learn not only about skin and its function, how it behaves, we have to learn the ingredients that maximize those functions and the behavior of the skin. With that knowledge, bang! You have unbelievable control over longevity and final finish and it makes you like a makeup wizard. Not only that, every single person that you ever work with is always, always, always gonna come to you as a resource for skin, always. So how powerful is that if you do direct to client sale? Let's be honest guys, where's the money in direct to client sale? Is it in the makeup or is it in the skincare? It's in the skincare. Why is that? It is, people go through it far more often. It's something people use every day. Makeup isn't necessarily something people wear every day. It is um, got a higher price point. So no, all of this, all of this, all of this is stuff that's extremely powerful, right? Um, why is portfolio development so smart? Guys, how many people think just taking a good picture of yourself and doing your angles and looking like a, a pretty girl in makeup is enough to book people? It isn't. It's not. Knowing and understanding how and why to create a portfolio is essential. It's absolutely, absolutely essential. Um, I've already told the joys of special effects. You know, I, my career has been predominantly in beauty. Would I be lying to say I, I've never done special effects? Of course I'd be lying. Um, you know, Michelle uh, Mulkey, who teaches um, our special effects course, she and I worked on an off-Broadway show together for which we got a best makeup award, right? Um, nomination. We didn't win. What's wrong with them? We didn't win. But um, look what special effects knowledge did for me. One of my very first campaigns was a, was a campaign for a huge phone company. And guess what it was? It was beauty and special effects. I had to do scars and tattoos on people to make them look like warriors. They didn't want two artists, they wanted one. Look what that was able to do for me. So give, give these, all these things little bits of consideration because the more you learn, the better off you'll be. So stand back and ask yourself, um, wh which one of these courses that I haven't taken most excites me? Which one most excite me, excites me, right? Ask yourself and say, which ones period excite me? Make a list and make a list of the order in which they excite you and then take one, take one, do it for yourself. Because do you know when you're learning, you're creatively charging in a different direction? It's a genius thing, particularly when you're learning in your area of interest. So what are some more things that we can do, you know, in addition to learning and that we can do at the same time that we're learning, right? Like I said, it's an excellent time to practice. Why, when you, when your friends are having holiday parties, why don't, you know, if it's your friends, not people who would pay you, right? If it's your friends, say, um, can we set up a little station where I do touch-ups on everybody? Wowza, here you are at a party thrown by your friends. You're doing something that they're gonna think is awesome and you're learning. 
you're learning, which is a pretty, um, which is a pretty awesome thing, right? I'm seeing Brittany say here that special effects is a lot of trial and error and you can use almost anything to practice. Well, that's true, but there are also really important techniques. There's not really trial and error in the basics of highlight and contour. There's not trial and error in how to properly lay a prosthetic. There's not trial and error in how to properly lay facial hair. There's not trial and error in how to properly put on a bald cap. And all of these things have to be learned, right? So I do agree that there is trial and error. Oh my God, how do I give her reptile skin? Trial and error. How do I do the basic necessities of special effects makeup that are believable for film and TV and someone standing right in front of you? It's not trial and error. It is a true practice with true theory, right? So when you learn that and then combine it with your own excited experimentation, wowzo, what can you achieve, right? But we can't overlook that one section. So other things that we can do in the winter, gather and throw, be, be the makeup artist at friends' parties. People will be delighted by it, right? Um, be, this is an interesting thing. Update your portfolio. St have your styled shoots. Schedule them in the winter. Styled shoots will get you more work. It, lights people up. If, if at a bare minimum, it will get you more followers. This is an excellent time to update your website. How's your website look? Do you have one? Does it look like crap? Um, why am I saying that? Like, does it look like crap? Because guess what? I've taken my website 90% down. My website right now is three, three pictures of a, beauty cam of a beauty campaign that I did that was in Brides Magazine, right? Um, why? Because I was just too busy. I was way too busy and I was redirecting the direction I was taking myself. That's why mine looks like that. Why does yours look like it looks? What are you trying to achieve? What does it look like? Is it delivering what you want it to deliver? Now is the time. Sit down, draw a map of what you want to make it. This is all important. This is a great opportunity for you to network. I've already talked about networking with hair salons, bridal salons, bridal boutiques, any place that can get you clients. Start to form relationships with them and network. Here's an interesting thing. How many of you have really sat down and cleaned out your kit? How many of you have looked and seen what truly is expired? Cleaned off every single label, the lips and mouths of things, cleaned the inside of the kit, looked at it and said, what needs to be in here? Why am I still carrying that? Condense it. This is a perfect time to do that. Um, one other thing that it's a great time to do, prepare your taxes. We are independent contractors as makeup artists. Go through, start to organize your receipts. Start to look at all of these elements, put them together. This is all stuff you can do in these slower times and then not panic right before tax season when guess what? Things are picking up again. So there's, these are all things that you can um, do in advance. I've talked to you about the power of the courses and I hope you guys will ask me questions about them you know, as we, as we go down. But one of the things that I wanna um, talk about and we're about to lead out and into your questions, one of the things that I wanna say here is holidays are also a really great time for us to recharge. They're such a great time for us to fuel those creative um, resources. How do we do that? There are great thinkers and great achievers who always say one of the biggest parts of their success is knowing that they have to balance work with play. So you have to make, um, Harleen and Ebony I, and Donna, I am so proud of you guys for always having clean kits. I am so proud of you. My brushes and stuff are always clean, but sometimes I'm done at the end of the day and I'm just shoveling it in to get my butt out of there. So I'm gonna take a lesson from you guys. Um, as I was saying, it's a perfect time to recharge. This is the moment when you, when you step back and you, you, you allow yourself those opportunities to play, to celebrate, to love, to be re-inspired. Because sometimes when you're so busy, 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 you get burned out. What is the greatest way to be able to say no to people that you don't wanna take the client that you need some time for yourself? It's exactly that. Say, no, thank you, God, I would love to work with you, but I just need a little bit of time with my family. But I know we're gonna do something great in the new year. You never have to make up excuses. You never have to say anything else. Just tell people the truth. This is what I need. This is what I'm doing, right? If you're thinking about a course, even if you're not, stand back and go, oh God, yeah, he's right. It's time for me to learn. What is the secret to my success, guys? I would say this to any single one of you, time and time and time again, right? I would say this to every single one of you. The secret to my success has been a couple of things. The secret to my success has been how educated I am in proper application, right? I am educated from really great makeup schools and really great makeup teachers. QC is one of them. Why can I tell you that? Because I know the program back and forth like the back of my arm and I wouldn't attach my name to it if it wasn't amazing. It is amazing. I wouldn't tutor people on something that was a sham if it wasn't amazing. It is amazing. Our other tutors are amazing. It's, it will really educate you, push you, shape you, make you think differently about what you do. Make sure what you do you're choosing and it's happening by choice. So if you're in that position and you're like, okay, it's time for me to learn. Guys, learn. Take a course. Do it now. Um, that being said, um, 
I want you to now start looking at your business the way that I said. I want you to look at it as a calendar with highs and lows and know how to maximize your time. It's an important thing for us to start to do and we're coming up on January. What better time to start looking at our careers in a different way? So what questions do I have, my love? Um, I see that they're starting to come in. Let's, um, let's take a peek at them. Um, okay, um, here we go. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, Jennifer, considering that you're not professional or even a student yet, should you start to do um, professional networking um, with what skills you have now or is it too soon? Um, here's my advice to you. I wouldn't, and this is why. Before people really know makeup, they always think they know it more than they do. And um, anybody who is a QC student, weigh in here. Feel free to weigh in. How many of you have gotten to unit B and you start hearing the words like, it's messy, it's uneven, it's asymmetrical, the angles are off? Um, you're, you're, you're gonna start to see, oh wow, after the very first unit, if you really apply yourself, you're gonna notice your makeup artistry will transform. So do I think it's right for you to put yourself out in the public light, start trying to make, sometimes the impression you get is the first one. So if you're not ready to be seen and you show yourself to people, they're gonna be like, ooh, oh, oh. You know, if it's all, no matter how good you think it is, when you really learn, you're gonna be better. You will be better. And my advice is learn. Make yourself better and grow. See, Ebony's making a comment. You get that you, you can sometimes get, it can, and it can almost seem harsh, right? It can almost seem, see Kelly's laughing. Oh my God, me too, right? Um, it can almost seem harsh. For those of you that are out there and those of you that work with me or our other tutors, you, you know, we're, I'm, we're gonna be completely honest with you. Nobody's ever gonna say it's good when it isn't, right? We're gonna tell you this needs work and why. But the reason we're gonna point stuff out is you can't fix what you can't see. Right now, one of the hardest things to, um, to do is to make sure that you're seeing your work symmetrically, evenly, and crisply because your brain shows you more what you want to see and less of what's really there. I know, it seems so weird, right? Your, your brain will see what you want to see more than what's there. So when you really, really, really learn these techniques, what you do will transform. So would I do it right now? No. I would enroll in Master Makeup Artistry and now will you get Pro Makeup Workshop for free and somewhere around Unit D. If you've really applied yourself and you notice your work is changing, then start to make those relationships. Because when your work is already in the right place and only growing from there, you can't show yourself too soon because people will know you're growing. But if you're too green and you show yourself, that can be itchy. It can be itchy. So I would just be a little bit careful. Shauna, what if you make a mistake on a client and they hate it? You know what? I love this question. I love this question and it's an interesting thing. What do you do then? How do you handle it if that ever happens? You know, one of the things, there's, there's a handful of things that I always say to people, right? I always say to people, <laughs> I, I know it so well that I forgot it. Um, I always say, there are a handful of things you just need in a space to be able to succeed. What are they? You need lighting, you need a table, you need a chair, you need a mirror. Why do you need a mirror? For exactly that reason. If you're building your look for your client, people always go, oh, I don't want them to see till I'm done. I don't want to, yeah, you might have to be saying to your client all the way, well, wait, wait and see. But all of a sudden your client might be going, oh my God, I don't want my eye to be that dark. Well, you can fix it now. Don't try and fix it at the bitter end. You know, if you have a mirror out, chances are that's not going to happen. If you have a mirror out and they're working with you every step of the way, they are a partner in crime to the look that you're creating. So if you start saying, okay, see what I'm doing, we can always build, we can always add, this is what I'm doing here, this is what this is gonna do and where it's gonna go, don't worry, I'm gonna soften that. And when you get to these, you say, oh, it's still too harsh. Well, then you know there, you can even soften it more before it's too late and you've built a whole look. The best thing I can say to you is a mirror will be your best friend and it will prevent that nine times out of 10. Best advice I can offer you there, all right? And if it does happen and someone doesn't like something, all you say is, tell me what I can do, tell me what you don't like, and I will do everything I can to fix it. And if you really listen to them, and you really know the classic techniques, you'll absolutely be able to fix it. There's no reason you, God, the, the curse of doing these webinars is you can keep looking at yourself, and I see my hair falling, and I'm like, ah, oh, no hairspray, the curse. Um, so, if you make them a partner in crime to the application, right, and you're working with the client, and they're, they're, they're going along for the ride with you, they're gonna like it because they're creating it with you. And mirrors are, mirrors are the solution to that. Okay, second question. Um, I would love some advice for people just starting out. You are overwhelmed but excited. You do work full time. Would your first thing um, to do just practice, practice, practice? 
You nailed it, darling. The first thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you are learning in the right place. Facebook and Instagram are not the right place to learn. The majority of people there are untrained. The majority of people there are doing their version of a trend, which often is riddled with improper technique. If that's your base for education, everything you do is always gonna be wobbly. If your base is like a piano, where you're learning the notes and you're learning the scales, it's always gonna be strong, powerful. That's the direction I'm pushing you toward. So what do I think, um, what do I think you should do? I think that um, if you're not enrolled in a course, sign up, take Master Makeup Artistry Pro Makeup Workshop. If you are enrolled, maybe consider adding an additional course to it. Take them slow and steady. Do not ever rush the courses. Now, what I think a lot of people do is they go, oh, I gotta get my unit B in. I called the model, but she couldn't come, so I'm gonna work on myself. Okay, don't. You submit it next week. Find someone else to work on, you know? Um, secondly, don't, don't submit anything until you've practiced enough. So practice, practice, practice is the key. If, when you look at those photos, guys, every, I want every one of you to trust me on this. And this is something that I want all of you to do with every image that you've created that you're proud of, okay? I'm giving everybody at home an assignment. I want you to look at those photos and I want you to study them the way that people, you remember when you were a kid, I don't know, do, does everybody know the book Highlights for Children? Or do you ever know when you read those magazines and you find those things and it says, um, these two pictures, find the five things that aren't the same. And then you look at it and in one of them, little cartoon Sally has a mitten and the other one she doesn't. Janice has a big ring on her finger in one and the other she doesn't. In one there's a champagne glass. You know, you know what I mean. There's five things you gotta search for them. I want you guys to treat every makeup you do like it is that search and find thing. So don't be afraid to, um, to print these out, right? Get a marker, print these out, make it fun for yourself. Is it you shaming yourself in your work? No, what it's doing is training your eye. It's teaching you to see things differently than you've ever seen them. So what I want you to do is I want you to um, pr print out your photos. If, if your photo, if your printer can print them clear enough, right? Print, print out your photos or get, get, a, get an erase marker that you can use right on your iPad, right? Or, you know, get, get your iPad or, your, your, or, or whatever, um, whatever um, tablet device that you have and get some software that allows you to write. You, you know, we all have those photo softwares we can write on. Get those and then I want you to study it and I want you to go from eyeliner to eyeliner. Okay, are these exactly the same on each side? Are these, are they, the, are the wedges the same? Are the angles the same? Are the shadows the same depth of color? Look at every single aspect of it and circle everything that isn't the same. And suddenly you're gonna notice, and this isn't bad, right? This is good. This is a huge step in your growth. You are going to notice that in the beginning you only see a few things, but the more you do it, you're gonna start seeing 10, 15, 20, 30 things and you're gonna be like, oh my God, my makeup's so bad. No, it isn't. Guess why? These things you're gonna start noticing are micro. They're tiny. Well, some of them you're gonna notice are gonna be huge, right? You're gonna suddenly notice one Cupid's bow is way up here and the other, you're gonna be like, how did I do that? Um, but guess what? Once you start noticing it on the photo, you'll start noticing it in person and there will no longer be these huge discrepancies. And then once you get to that point where you're noticing 15, 20, 30 things and you keep doing and practicing your makeup, what you're gonna notice is they start becoming less and less and less of them, but you have a more keen eye. So the fact that you're seeing less means there really is less, which means you're starting to notice them in the application and um, you're not, um, you're noticing them in the application instead of having to wait to the photo. That's what I mean about changing your eyes to change what you're capable of. Isn't that amazing? And that can all happen for you. That's a huge part of education. And that's a big, a big part of what we do when we're working together. So if anybody ever feels bullied when they're getting their feedback, know that it's not bullying. It's trying to show you things in a different perspective, trying to show you how to look at things like an artist and how to become your own teacher. And that's a lot of what happens when you're really learning appropriately. And it's what will happen for you here at QC. How many of you, put some, put, send up some hearts, send up some thumbs up. If you guys are willing to do that, send me up, send me some, send me some signs now because I want a commitment from all of you that that is something that you are willing to do, right? Um, okay, uh, got another question here. Um, Brittany, your makeup studio is in the basement, not the best lighting. You're curious as to what would help that. There, um, there are windows, but it's also winter in Ontario. Yeah, that's dark. Not the best lighting. You're curious as to what would help that. Um, you wanna know the best thing that you can do if your basement's big enough. Um, I tell people to avoid ring lights. Here's why I tell people to avoid ring lights, right? They cast such a direct hard light that everything is blown out. It makes things look better than they are. And you're like, oh, well, that doesn't help me in my basement. Here's what you do. Get the big square lights. 
They're cheap. You can get them for like 15 bucks. Get, get one or two of them. Set them up side, side by side angle. Stand back where the light meets. The face will be evenly illuminated from all around and everything will look perfect. And if you have your basement studio, that might be invaluable to you. It will be something you will use for your entire career. So that's one of the things that, that's one of the little pitches that I would give you and that would be my advice. They're not expensive. And if in the beginning you do need a ring light, use one, but remember they are a crutch, okay? Um, Elizabeth. What should you do if you don't have um, anyone to practice um, your makeup looks on? You live in Virginia and your family's three hours away from me and no friends here. Now this is an interesting question for me and I always say it a particular way. It's very easy to make friends. And when you're trying to give away a service that people pay for, they're usually willing to take it, right? Um, they're usually willing to take it. So what is my advice? Um, my advice is start volunteering at women's shelters, put up a posting at churches, um, see if you can, you know, make some friends with a next door neighbor. Um, if you really have to only work on yourself, it's something you can do, but this is something you're probably not going to like to hear, right? Um, doing makeup on yourself is about 50 times easier than doing it on other people. Why? You're connected to yourself by a nervous system. So close your eyes. Try and find your eyebrows without your eyes open. Try and find the center of your lip. You won't touch anywhere else. You could just, look, I'm gonna put my blush on. My eyes are completely closed. I could do every bit of this. Um, okay, let me just do concealer only in my tear duct. Okay, got it. Let me do the outer corner of my eye with an eyeshadow. You could essentially do an eye makeup or a full face with your eyes closed because of your nervous system. It's way easier to work on you than it is someone else. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to practice on yourself, but you will not learn or grow anywhere near as much as you will if you work on other faces. So um, my other question for you is this, if you can't find people to work on for free, is it going to be twice as hard for you to find people to pay you? When you're doing something people want for free, they should be lining up for you. Don't be afraid. And I know why people ask this question. The reason they, and it's the same reason I would ask it. They don't want to, they don't want to have to put the foot to the pavement and start to find people. They don't want to have to go out and network and form these relationships. You have to. It's a huge part. It's also part of how we get our jobs, right? It's, a, it's an extremely important thing. So do I, do I think um, it's the end of the world if you can't? No. But do I think you'll learn and grow a lot more if you find people? Oh, absolutely. All right. Let's see here. Um, you have already started um, charging for freelance makeup. Um, would it make sense for you to use your friends' faces to practice on for free? Yeah, yeah, use your friends and family. Um, and because this is the thing, if you, even if your friends and family are, if they're people who already pay you, it doesn't mean you can't work on them for free. What you say to them is, um, I'm learning and I'm growing. You know, um, these, these are the things that I need to practice on. These are the days coming up that it would really benefit me for me to practice. If you have something, one of those nights, these are the times that I can come, I will come and help you. This is for my learning and growth. You can tell me exactly what it is you want. Um, and I, I just need to be able to practice my skills. Or you can say to people, these are 10 things I need to practice. I need to practice cat liners. I need to practice a smoky eye. I need to practice, you know, so you can go through, um, you can go through a whole list of things and send them to your friends and you can learn and grow that way. I think it's a brilliant idea and I am, I am fully, um, fully behind it. All right, um, I'm seeing a comment about not being able to find a boy to put boy makeup on. Um, you can grab anybody, grab, um, grab a nephew, grab a neighbor's kid, grab, you know, grab somebody. It's so simple. You shouldn't see the makeup. It should be invisible. So it's not, no one's going to walk out of there caked in makeup. People are probably going to be mostly dazzled by it. You know, find a, um, you know, find, you know, Brittany, I'm so glad your husband let, let him volunteer. The thing is when you're doing airbrush makeup on a man, like I, when I was in makeup school, we all have to work on each other, right? When you're in a brick and mortar school, that's the only thing that's different about um, the schools that we have here, the model sitting next to you, right? It's the only thing that's different. You learn exactly the same te techniques, you learn everything else, right? When we were doing these makeups, girls had to work on me, I had to work on girls, you know? You, you, you learn all about skin, features, so many things, and it's, it's incredibly valuable. Nice suggestion, dance studios. Everybody has a minimum of one dance studio within driving distance of them. That is an awesome place to learn and practice. Awesome, because those girls will use it. Um, that's, that's an, I hadn't even thought of that, Donna. Nice. Really, really, really nice. Um, okay, guys, I, I, it's looking to me like, um, that's the, that's the questions that have come in. Uh, what I want to say to you guys is, um, oh, no, Harleen, 
Got a question here from Harleen. You're having issues working with eyebrows. You don't know how to get them better. You always get aggressive, um, no matter how, um, how much open um, that your hand is. Please help. Let me tell you what to do. The mistake that so many people make is they always go to the fill-in method. Fill-in is absolutely a reasonable way to do... Um, Oh, and Ebony, correct. The high school theaters are an amazing place to practice on boys. Um, e even working with a high school theater company where you're teaching them would allow you to get some of your models. Um, okay, so with our eyebrows, people always tend to do the fill-in method. You can completely do the fill-in method. It tends to be much harder and harsher. You want to be really gentle with your eyebrows. Take an eyeliner pencil and sharpen it till it's super, super, super sharp. So sharp you have like a pencil, a pin pin tight line on your arm and then just sit and draw like look at, I'm gonna get right in here guys you see the direction of my hair growth in here see how these grow up then they start to grow over we've got a whole section in the course about this see the direction so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put in hair like strokes with my pencil and work the and follow the direction of those hair like strokes until I have the exact brow I want but when you do those hair like strokes guess what it is not going to look like you drew the eyebrow in Properly done eyebrows are the equivalent of makeup microblading, right? The equivalent of makeup microblading. So try that. And then does it mean you can't graduate and experiment to pomades and all this other stuff and filling things in? Sure you can, but learn them the classic ways first, right? So I see here that you, you love, do, you know, Dominique, you love doing the fill in and fade in the front. That's trend. That's a trend. That's not classic technique. So I don't mind that you do that, but the more important thing to do is, do you know the classic technique? You have to know the classic technique because that will go out of style. And guess where that comes from? Drag. That's a drag trend. Go back and research Elle magazine. They did something in July, August that tells everybody that that trend, so many other trends, they come from drag. Make sure that you understand these things and, and are doing it by choice and not just by habit, right? That's an extremely important thing. All right. Um, I wonder if that's all the questions because that's everything that um, Karina sent to me. Um, so let me start to do a closeout. Guys, You've got to view your business as exactly that, a business. It has highs, it has lows. And like any other business, you have to form strategies for when to make the most of you know, hard times, right? You have to form strategies um, to make the most of high and lows, of earning times and non-earning times. That's why the key thing that I can tell you guys is learn, take these courses. At a bare minimum, guys, the things that I would tell you, at a bare minimum, you should take skincare, master makeup artistry, pro makeup workshop. At a bare minimum, I would add global beauty to that, and I would, truthfully, I'd add them all, because every one of these are what added up to me. When I got this education, I was working with celebrities within six months. Six months. That's it. Because I made a plan of action, and I had the education to back it. I was working with celebrities in six months. Why can't you? And everything in, in these courses is exactly, it's more, it's more. It's, it's me looking back and making, the, and, and making the knowledge better, sharper, cleaner, and crisper than I was given it 20 years ago. It's better, it's crisper, it's cleaner, it's taught with precision to help you succeed. And there's no reason that you can't. Master makeup artistry, it's like the piano. Learn those techniques and take them everywhere. All right? So uh, that being said, um, I know you guys are going to do amazing things. I definitely hope that a whole bunch of you are, um, all of you, are going to start a new course. And if you've just been sitting and dilly-dallying and not doing your work, do your work. Your dreams don't just appear on your lap. Um, dreams come from a combination of, what is that old saying? It's, it's, it's preparedness. Um, you know, meets, you know, practice, right? Put in that effort. There is so much you can do. And I believe in you. I believe in you. I know you are capable of anything you put your heart to. Now, I said it in the video to you yesterday, and I mean it even more today. If nobody's yet told you they love you today, please allow me to be the first. I love you. I love that you love makeup. I love that we are a community together pushing ourselves to be better, to create better, to love more. And we are always going to be there to do that with and for one another. So um, I give you my heart, I give you my love, and I thank you so much for um, all of the magic that you guys are going to continue to create. Um, remember, we do free continuing ed every single month. If you guys have not watched the one on uh, conceal and color correct and line shape and angle and makeup, please, please, please watch them. They are nothing will replace them. They will t they they will be amazing for you, right? So I'm super proud of you guys. I can't wait to see the magic you're all going to make. And um, if you have questions about what classes to, to take or what might be best for you in your continued journey, 
Um, you can always reach out to me directly through um, Instagram or Facebook. I'm at Nathan Walnut, no spaces, Nathan Walnut, not Walnut as in that, you know, that brain looking nut we get from the tree. Um, sometimes I do get a lot of people writing me. If, if they do and it takes me a little while, I will find you. If for some reason I don't, send an email to QC and go, Nathan hasn't found my question, please forward this to him and you will get a response from me. I never leave anybody for dead and if I did, it's unintentional. So never, never be afraid to reach out. I love every one of you. I'm here for each and every one of you and let's make this new year even better than the one before. Because the only moment we have, my loves, is the one that we are living in right now. So make the decision right now, here with me, and I'm gonna make the same commitment. Make the decision to let next year be better. Let it be better because we are gonna be more educated. Let it be better because we are gonna be better customer care service givers. Let it be better because of all the things we're gonna do for ourselves and for the other people around us. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy anything else I may be missing. Um, I love each and every one of you and I can't wait um, to see what, this, uh, to what good and joyful things this next year brings you. All right, my friends, until next time, have an awesome night. Mwah! Thank you.